Uh, hey, uh, my name is Andre. Uh, that's my family name and Twitter handle. Um, where's the link? <laughs> Don't try to memorize it. Um, yeah, as Patrick said, I'm one of the uh, co-organizers of React Vienna. Uh, so if you want to, if you in Vienna uh, or hanging out, just talk to us and um, we can organize something if you want to speak at it. Uh, you might know me from last year because I was talking about this uh, project of mine. Uh, it's called Lean Staged. Um, and uh, at the last agent conf, I say that I almost fixed this thing uh, that I've been working for almost a year on. Uh, but I actually didn't fix it back then. Uh, but I fixed it in the meantime, and that is a, it's cut off. Uh, but it's a screenshot of a merged PR. And uh, that's a partial staged files support. And the feedback have been great since then. Uh, people really like it. Uh, so I wrote a blog post about it, but uh, today I'm not going to talk about it anymore <laughs> because I talked too much about it. Uh, today I'm going to talk about focus management in React. Um, and yeah, so uh, who of you know what the concept of focus in, in DOM? Like this pseudo uh, uh, selected that focus. Uh, okay, I, I need more hands. I don't believe you don't know what focus means. Okay, okay, let yeah, yeah. So uh, consider this simple input, right? Input element. Um, so the focus, yeah, that's a default input on my screen. So I'm gonna increase the size. Today I decided to make my presentation interactive. And the focus is this ugly blue thing. Everybody knows, right? Um, so, and then you try to do, then you try to make your input more beautiful. Um, uh, the the focus gonna stay ugly. So uh, many people. Uh, so, but they need focus, right? They need focus uh, to do this kind of things. So when the tap, so then someone presses the tap key you kind of want to know where you are. But it still looks ugly, so many agree that it is ugly. So uh, lots of people try to make it look good, and they do it by adding that. Yeah. I, I think people who laugh did that at least once. <laughs> so raise your hand who did that. Don't be on, yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. Okay, um, so good looking inputs. Yeah, so now you're tapping between them and you can't say where you are. Uh, and that sucks. And please don't do that anymore. You did it once, I did it once, enough. Don't do that, that, that that's really bad. Um, so there is some proof why you don't have, like why you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, so, so the idea of like, uh, how can we do, how can we make it work and look good? And here is the same kind of input that has accessible ring that doesn't look like shit, and it works as what you would expect. So it's tappable, and the size of this ring is also. Uh, it depends on the size of the input. So if it's if it's if the input gonna be smaller, then the ring is also gonna be smaller. Um, so how does that work? Uh, is uh, simple, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so in, in this example, I use style components uh, because uh, I, 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 it's it's a talk about React nonetheless, and style components has this nice ergonomics of combining. Uh, attaching styles to uh, com React components. Um, so the the only thing I had to add to add the focus ring uh, is this mixing. Um, the mixing is so there is lots of code, but uh, there's not much uh, bes besides the comments, not much to it. Uh, so it it kind of just renders this box shadow. So the whole trick is done with two back box shadows. That's why I decided to extract it because uh, uh, it's just yeah more reusable. So I could use it not only on uh, input elements but on also on some on buttons and different types of elements. Um, and that 
piece of code that uh, so basically you can pass the color you the base color of the focus ring and it would render all this the border and the, the box shadow and remove the default outline that looks ugly and it also gonna cover this disabled state so for uh, inputs that or con controls that are disabled, it's not going to render the, uh, the focus ring. So, yeah, um, that was kind of part first part of my talk uh, because it's not really what I wanted to talk about. So that was kind of introduction. So, who of you know what uh, this selector focus is in? Seriously, one hand. Uh, okay. Uh, it's a, it's actually a cool selector. So um, here's the the full definition uh, from the VW3C, uh, um, and and the idea of focus the scene uh, is that it applies to kind of to the parent. Uh, so you can say if the focus inside this element uh, do something about it. Um, and it's easier to be shown an, as an example. So in this case, I have a form element that wraps two inputs, and I want to do something about the form, not about the input, then one of the inputs has the focus, so I want to change the background. So in, in this case, it goes to yellow. And, and as long as I, I'm inside of the focus inside of one of these inputs, it's going to be yellow, but as soon as I leave uh, it, it's it going to lose the style. And it's... Uh, it's written, that's all CSS you're going to need for this. It's focus within, and then you say background yellow. And it's applied to a form element. Um, but one thing I was missing on one of my projects uh, was the JavaScript API for focus within. Um, and you might be wondering, OK, first, first thing that comes in mind, yeah, of course, uh, there must be something in, in the DOM uh, because we have this uh, focus API, JavaScript API. We can say uh, dot focus on element and it's going to focus it. Or we can ask DOM if it's focused, right? Well, uh, I searched long enough uh, and the user platform not always works. So, like, it is like, <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing because, yeah, so I, so I don't cry. And you might be wondering, why do you even need this kind of thing? Like, why do you need JavaScript API for uh, things uh, like that? And here's another example. Uh, it's super simple. I'm going to show you a more complex example where I actually needed it, why I did it. Uh, <clears throat> so in that case, I actually want to change the, uh, the legend of this field set that wraps these inputs when they focus inside this thing. Uh, and as you can see, as soon as I enter uh, the focus, it's going to change the, not, not just the color, but also the content, uh, one of the DOM nodes. And then I leave, uh, yeah, it reacts to the state. And that's the old code I need for this. It's also kind of, it feels like a lot of code, but in a nutshell, it's just one uh, ROPA element that's called focus this in. Uh, that wraps the form. And then I have the thing called render props to pass the state down. So uh, then I have this focused variable uh, that's going to be a Boolean, depending on the actual state. And a get ref is just to attach it to the uh, exact DOM node I would like it to attach. Uh, so it's not uh, necessary if it's just the descendant of the focus within. Um, and then this, this focused variable, I can react on the state. So in this case, i just changing some styles. And I, that I could do with the pseudo selector in my CSS, right? But then I need more complex things. I also can do it here in React declaratively. I can just say then the whole thing has focus. I'm going to change the DOM node content. Um, and React is amazing for this kind of abstractions because it hides all the dirty hacks I had to apply under this simple uh, declarative component. 
Um, so yeah, I, I, I did find out that there is no uh, native JavaScript API for Focus Within uh, available, so I decided to build one with React. And um, yeah, I built it. <laughs> uh, I needed it, uh, um, and I built it. And the initial version, so then I, like, I tried, I think, three times to approach the problem. It turned out the problem isn't that simple. And I found one discussion on VW3C about introducing this kind of API to DOM. No, uh, to DOM. And the, the whole discussion is like, yeah, the, the whole thing is super complex. There is lots of edge cases. We need to consider all of them. And it goes for two years. And there is no decision. Um, so in React, it's not that much code. It's about 150 lines of code, this comment. And it uses the platform. So in a nutshell, all, uh, so that was the second iteration. So I decided probably I could just ask then the event, the course, if the query selector matches. And that's pretty much it, right? And it worked um, almost. So I felt like this. It's like, yeah, yeah. Because, because of this guy. <laughs> Um, so the, the problem that the whole focus uh, and, and keyboard navigation in, um, in React and in DOM in general, because React just does the, uh, what, what DOM does, what the, the, the platform does, is that the implementations aren't uh, unified. So some browsers might implement uh, the same spec a little bit differently, and that causes some events to occur later or sooner, in, 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 not in the same order. So I couldn't rely on, on the, as this PR says, I had to rewrite the whole thing. <laughs> um, but on a, on, a, on a positive note, after I have rewritten it in a different, like with a different technique, um, it kind of started also working in, in the browser that doesn't support focus within natively yet, so like uh, uh, I think Edge doesn't support, IE doesn't support it uh, at all, and I think Edge doesn't support it either. Uh, so there's been new solution, it, it worked with Internet Explorer and Edge, so I felt like that. Um, and um, here comes the short demo. So that's the, the uh, basically the website and the documentation uh, for the for my component, and for the first example, it only logs uh, to console, then the whole thing receives focus and lo losing focus. Um, so the idea here that this events only occur once, so then I uh, switch between inputs and button, I don't get any new received focus uh, events. And I also, also should get only one lost focus, then the focus leaves the whole thing. Because if you would try to do this natively, uh, you would get this pair of events for every transition between elements. So you couldn't say, uh, yeah, am I inside of this thing or am I outside? And they would happen really, really quickly, but you would still <coughs> need to track somehow uh, these transitions. Um, so that is pretty much what I showed you before, just more ugly. Um, that was basically the yeah one of the reasons. I strongly discourage you to use this uh, thing for styling purposes only, because everything that you can do the CSS better do it the CSS. Uh, so the, the only purpose of this thing uh, to exist is to do. Uh, these cases where you need some logic attached to this kind of events. And here's an example. Uh, then I built it, I realized, hey, I could just build uh, this mousetrap thing. Uh, with it just, you know, just by combining uh, a couple of events here. So, and it's basically then on Blur, of course, um, it just goes uh, to the first, uh, to the input. And when I disable it, I can just navigate uh, away of it. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, uh, it's on GitHub. Uh, you can check it out and let me know what you think. And yeah, so w one thing you might be wondering why it's called simple, uh, and that's funny because uh, then I finished working and I decided to publish it on, on NPM, and I start, started the publishing process, and it said, no, uh, I can't publish it because when, uh, this package already exists, and I'm like, uh, it, when did I publish it? I didn't publish it yet. So I found out that there is a similar project already on GitHub, uh, of course. Um, I didn't check it before, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it, um, yeah, so is life. I mean, but it, it, it's far from simple. So I checked out the source code and I was like, oh, there are lots of moving parts and mouse tracking. And this is one of the methods I also tried in the beginning where you kind of tracks where the mouse last uh, position was. And depending on that, you can also do some heuristics. But I didn't want to use this method because I thought it's not really accessible if you're using keyboard only. So you, I, don't, I didn't want to rely on mouse at any sense or on delaying the events. Uh, so in, in my code, I tried to be as synchronous as possible. And yeah, that's it. This conference has been gradually getting better for me. The quality of the lineup is usually really, really good. And this is something I'm really saying thumbs up. They're really try to get speakers here that are pushing to the future of web technologies. I just feel like it's a very community-driven conference. It also is a lot of quality, and people are just nice. Hi, my name is Sarah, and this is Asian Conf in Dortmund. Amazing venue, Austria is beautiful. Meeting all of the people in the community and getting to go and hang out and ski.